Let's go create a new basic form for our website. For this example, we'll just do name, email address, and the message you wanna to send to, in this case, TD Sheridan Lab. To get started, let's go to portal.office.com and sign in. If As you can see, Forms is not sticking out here because it's not a primary Microsoft product, but it is a very good quiz and survey product. Click on apps and then it's right there. Create a new one by clicking on new form. And we are now at a blank form. First, let's give it a name. Contact us. Then the description is just something intuitive to describe the form. In this case, we send a message to TD Sheridan Lab. So as I mentioned for our basic form, let's start with the name. As you can see from our other forms I've created here, the AI is already guessing at what I'm gonna put in this form based off my previous habits. So for this case, we'll just use the example of using my name and click on add selected. Make sure it's required, actually make sure all these fields are required or otherwise you could get some spam bots and stuff like that in here as well. Next, we need the email address field. Click on add new and text. What is your email address required field? And then lastly, we'll add one more text field and we're gonna make this one a long answer. We're just gonna call this message. And we are done, that's our basic form. The most important part of this section though is we do have to change security settings. By default, Microsoft leaves this locked down to just coworkers or the other people in your organization. But if you're gonna put this on your website, you need people outside your company to be able to respond to it. So right here, anyone can respond. All we gotta do is just click on share and then you can copy the URL. You can get a QR code. If you're gonna embed it in your website, here's the code to copy and paste into the website, or you can email it out as a link and he'll just send it straight out. For our testing and this video, I'm just gonna copy this link to the clipboard here and then we will test it in a minute. Now that we have the form created, we need a spot in lists or a SharePoint list to store the information once people respond to it. So let's go over to lists and create a new list. To move over to lists, click on the waffle menu, app launcher, the grid thingy in the top left corner, whatever you wanna call this thing, it doesn't really matter. And then lists is right here or alphabetically underneath all apps under L. Again, lists are just SharePoint lists. As you can see, I'm using it all over the place for ideas, for the website, some accounting stuff, some home projects. For this example here, just click on new list. You can use one of the templates if it lines up with your goal, or you can create a blank one for this one. Since it's just a basic one, I'm gonna create a blank list. Otherwise, we'll be deleting a lot of default columns out of these templates here. Just like anything else, you give it a name and a description. I'm gonna change it to blue and let's use the little beaker icon here. Now the save to piece is kind of important depending on how many other people are gonna look at it. If it's just for you, it can be underneath my list. If it's gonna be accessed by other people, make sure you put it in the SharePoint site that lines up with them. Or if you're already a member of a Microsoft team, that'll be listed here as well. For this example, I'm just gonna put it in this test site they have by creating a blank list, we just have a title column by default. So let's add a couple of columns. Similar to our form, click on add column and then single line of text. We can just say name. You don't have to put a description in there. It's up to you if you want to or not. And the second one is email address. I'll skip over description this time so you guys don't have to watch all my typos. And lastly, we need multiple lines of text for the message section to make sure we have enough room to hold the entire thing. So this is a one-to-one -one setup right now with our forms and we're almost there to start linking in together. Because I like to process things, I wanna keep track of it, I'm gonna add two more fields just to denote if I've looked at it, reached out, you know, a status of the message and then a notes field on what the outcome was about it. So let's create a choice field. I'm gonna say status. 
we'll say new complete waiting on customer why not and then we'll set the default value here as new and then we will add one more multiple lines of text here so we can put in our notes when we refer back to this later so notes if it is something that grows it's a back and forth conversation negotiation whatever the case may be uh, if you check this box here as you add more notes in the future it's going to time stamp them and username stamp them too for each update so you can kind of keep track of when stuff happened as you do it and that's it our sharepoint side is done in lists right now so the last part is just to link it all up in power automate there go click on your app launcher waffle grid thingy in the top left corner here and then select power automate Power Automate is Microsoft's solution that competes directly against If This Then That and other automation platforms. To create a flow, to connect the two, we just click on Create. All we need is an automated cloud flow. By clicking on this box, it's gonna trigger a wizard for, with a form for us to fill out. Just like everything else, we gotta give it a name. Process forms for contact us form. And since it's an automated flow, it needs a trigger. The one that I've used the most recently is when a new response is submitted. For you, if this is your first time in Power Automate, it's probably not gonna be there. As you start typing, it starts filtering it down. You can see that forms one is now number three. And if you just keep, keep typing out that sentence, it pops up to number one again. So just select when a new response is submitted. This is gonna trigger this flow to run when people respond to our contact us form. Then click on create. Now it needs to know which form to pay attention to. So in this drop down menu here, in your case, you'll only have one form named contact us. Next, we need to add an action to get the details of that form so we can process it. So click on new step. This search is very intuitive. So in this case, I'm just gonna search get form and it found get response details, which is exactly what I was looking for. I just said it wrong. 10 seconds ago. And for form ID, we're just gonna click in here, contact us, and then response ID, we're gonna use the dynamic item here of response ID, which will automatically grab it from the, the trigger when a response has been submitted. All right, we got the form pieces lined up. We have all the information about the response on the form. Now we need to put it in SharePoint. Oh, we're gonna click on new step again, and we are gonna search for create new item and find the one for sharepoint create item and for the site list it should show up here if it is a brand new site and everything hasn't synced up you can get the url and put it in there manually and all work out and then for list name you find the name of your list which in this case web contact us leads is what we called it i probably could have given it a better name but oh well here we have the same fields that line up with the columns of our SharePoint list. So title, status, name, email, message, notes, which lines up with these columns here, lines up with our form here as well. So you just gotta start plugging in dynamic content. Name, what is your name? Email address, email address, message, message. Now for the title, the title is a required field of a SharePoint list. Create something unique so they stand out, but we can just make it up as we go. Um, Contact us, lead, space, hyphen, space, submission time. That way, we'll, in theory, this will make it show nobody creates a duplicate entry and it's the exact same. They'll be unique. We can leave right here the status on new because by creating this, it will be a new uh, lead for us to follow up on. And notes, we can leave empty as well. And then you just click save. We got form created, we got the set SharePoint site created, and we have Power Automate flow created. So let's do it Microsoft recommended and test this flow out. We'll side by side this here. I have the URL to our contact form on the clipboard here. So if I open up and paste it in, and you can see it is our basic contact us form. Let's fill it out. All right, so we hit submit. 
it says thank you. If we go over to Power Automate and refresh it, we see that it did run, it took 16 whole seconds. Form ID, garbly gook, that really just means contact us. Tails, Bodie McBoatface, there's my email address, submission time, create item, here's everything that SharePoint is doing behind the scenes. And now when you go over here, it's right here. We got contact us lead at the time in UTC. The status is set to new. Bodie McBoatface and an email address. And now if you're processing this, just for example, this person wanted to sponsor the channel or whatnot, so you could send them an email and then just add your note in here. Saves it there. As you can see, because we did that extra checkbox and appended it, it has the name, has a timestamp, and then we can change it to waiting status. That's the basic setup. If you wanted to, you could add a email uh, notification in the Power Automate flow. Well, if you have made it this far, then that means you found this video at least semi-informational. So if you could, go and leave a like down below and also consider subscribing. If you're interested, my social media handles are down there as well. And until next time, feel free to leave any comments, questions, concerns, suggestions, all that stuff down in the comments section and I'll respond to it as soon as I can. Until next time.